prioritize you know Russian targets out in the field as Ukraine gets more and more assets that can hit these targets. Well, right, you know, there are, there are strategic targets and tactical targets, right? Um, you, Ukraine is it doesn't have the ability right now to address strategic targets, meaning, you know, and I don't think they want to. They don't want to hit an oil refinery outside of Moscow. You, you know, that that's that's not what they want to do. But they've got enough targets of their own that have been taken from them that they can hit. Um, you know, nobody expected the Moscow to go down. I mean, nobody. When I when I first saw a picture of that, I put it up and I I, I tweeted wishful sinking, because do you I know who, do you know who caught that? We I was actually listening into radios when I caught that. We listened into it the whole way it went down. That's amazing, isn't that great? Isn't that look? They're just not fighting the foreign intelligence service. They're fighting you guys. That's you know, I just you know every now and then I'll come on a tweet and somebody's copying you know, Russian strategic bomber frequencies. So, you know, here come the cruise missiles. I, I'm just big in that. So, it, you know, so let, let's, again, let, let's not fight Russia's war. You you think of what we've got on our side, OSINT and, and smart guys like you who know what to look for and put it out. Look, one important thing has happened in this war, and that is that, you know, one of the principal you know, pillars of warfare, as we all know, is surprise, right? The Russians are not able to to concentrate forces and 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 launch surprise operations because every NATO satellite in the world is bumping into each other in low orbit, taking pictures of them. You know, look, we've basically got you guys, civilians, listening to the Moscow go down. Look, let's make that hurt Putin, right? And yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, no, it really is. I mean, every day I have a look for the, a lot of Russian Telegram channels and I see the likes of your maps, my my photos, um, jo Jomini, the West himself, his maps are shared a lot, um, so, and, a, and a few OSINT accounts. The Russians are screwing. They hate it. They really hate it. They, they hate it. You know what I love doing? I I love plotting uh, company-grade command posts, you know, and there's a lot of things that can go into one of my plant, one of my plots, you know, there, there's some SIGINT, but I'm looking at it as a platoon commander, and I'm like, okay, look, it's got to be here. That's got to be where this command post is, bang, you know, and I like to think that somebody, somebody's going to hit that with five rounds, and look, I'm glad, I'm glad they don't like it, tough luck. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I've got, I've got family and friends that are still in the forces, and I know for a fact that there, there's eyes on on a lot of social media, also um, accounts and stuff like that. And they will watch. They're not silly. They, <clears throat> we're doing a job for them. We are really doing a, a big job for them, where they don't need to outsource a lot. Of this work does get outsourced. You'll know about that, Chuck. Um, yeah, but it, that's important stuff now. It really is. You're doing yeah. great work. I have a question from the audience. Somebody says, um, how, how deep behind enemy lines do you believe that the Ukrainian special forces can work? Wow. I think that's unlimited. I think that's unlimited. So, you know, let's talk about special forces for, for a second. Like, you've, so you've got special forces, and that's a guy carrying an ID card. And you know what? He's been to the, he's been to the Q course, and he's a regular Green Beret, et cetera, et cetera. Look, you take that guy out of his uniform, and you put them in a car and you pile up a mattress and some clothes and a couple of moving boxes on top and you drive him around and now he's he's behind the russian lines right so we were talking about how important it would be to give russia a, a green i mean to give ukraine ukraine a green beret capability and what the green berets do is, is you know they go in and run partisan networks right so you give a Green Beret 20 farmers, and he's going to teach them how to clean and fire their weapon. He's going to teach them how to bury that weapon under a tree. He's going to teach them how to, how to, you know, how to fill out a, an initial intelligence report, how to communicate those locations, etc. And you train those partisans up so they can, like any good guerrilla army, as we've seen in Afghanistan, 
as we've seen in Ireland, as we 